Before we get started with today's class, I'd like to make a special note to First Congressional Church, the Rockaway Times, and DollarStretcher.com for helping support us. We have been getting a very good online uh, following, and we're going to work on building a, the actual classroom attendance up. But the online following has been great, and I thank everyone for their support. So today, let's get started. We're going to do two things today. Today is going to be mostly uh, lessons. We're going to plan our first project, and we're going to go ahead and plan, figure out how to plan a project. So for our first project, there was a couple of things that I was considering. Uh, one of the easier things that's good to start with is I just did an article on what they call a wine glass caddy. It's Basically, a simple piece of wood that sits on the wine bottle and you hang the wine glass on the other side. And it's great for if you have a company, uh, it's not only for a wine bottle, you can use it for sparkling water or cider or anything else like that. You know, most of the bottles, it's basically the same shape. It's a simple product, but at the same time, it's going to teach you hands on. You can learn sanding. You're going to learn how the filling that we worked on in the last two classes is going to apply because that's where we're going to do some decorating on it and the fill is going to come in and that's going to stand out in the decoration. You're going to learn to cut with a jigsaw and uh, I might even bring in the mighty box and teach you how to cut the wood's length to make it more fun. That's my first suggestion. The second su suggestion I have is something that's getting popular now is they do signs like a rustic looking sign where you know it's like a pallet wood laying and you etch a saying uh, some people like live in love or live laugh or whatever yeah. we could also do a sign like that uh, the beauty on these type of projects are the simple projects to start with they give you the basics on the cutting and everything now, um, the sanding and everything that's involved. They also keep the cost down because with my business, I have plenty of stock, so I can supply all the materials for it and it'll keep things going nice and smooth. Um, do we have a preference? I would like to see the sign. Okay. How about you? You like the sign? Okay, so now we're going to learn how to actually plan the project. We're going to act as if I don't have any materials. And we're going to do this from scratch. When you're planning on any project, and this applies to anything, whether you're building a bathroom in the house or making a little sign, you've got to plan on what you need. So there's going to be, and that, that's going to change depending on, you know, the project. Some projects you may need a saw, some projects you may need sander, so on and so forth. So there's going to be a lot of change as you progress. One of the other things that you find is another article I did was a basic toolkit. A basic toolkit is very, very simple. It's like next to nothing. But the additional tools involved, that stuff that you build up as time goes on, and as you take on additional projects, you learn to say, all right, well, I want to add this to my collection. Or this is something I'm only going to use once. I can borrow from someone. Um, another thing about planning the tools is there's certain tools you're going to use a lot. So you've got to get a better quality, and certain tools you're going to use less. As I bring in the tools, I'm going to explain a little bit about each tool so that you can get some hands on, get some knowledge about it, and actually create. A few things, you know, I did some playing around online. A few things I came across that I really like. There are two words that we don't use. Impossible and unnamed. If you notice on both of them, if my eraser works, they got two letters. Because possible and able to work that, you're ready to go. Okay. Success. 
success. Yeah. Any project is a, is a success. If you fail at it and you redo it, you make it over 10 times. And it still comes out like garbage. But you learn something from it, it's a success. So you gotta start, you gotta take your steps. You gotta think about what you wanna do. You gotta plan it out, what you're working on now. We already did the thinking because we picked the project. So now I'm gonna do the plan. Then you gotta try it. Then you gotta not, not knock down my sign. <laughs> That's my fault. I should have an easel on this. Then you gotta do it. Keep doing it and retry. That's key things. Because the first time you do something, there's a, you're going to mess things up. As a contractor, I'm out in the field, and there's a lot of things that I see go on, or one of my workers do, and I got to go on and read them. Uh, so don't ever let something not coming out right make it feel like a failure. You know, learn what you did wrong. Because when you're doing another project down the line, you're not going to make that mistake. So every failure becomes a success. Now I have a saying in my work. My customers love it. I tell them there is no problems, there's only solutions. Mm -hmm. We are going to come across problems with things. Things ain't going to work out just right. So as you come across problems, Every problem you face, you gotta take take a minute, take a breather, and you gotta come up with a solution for it. So it takes a little work some time, it takes trial and error, but it's not that hard. And once you get all the basics down, you'll see the problem become less and less as you learn to apply the basics to other things. As I said just before uh, class started, we are going to take what we learned in the first two classes. And we're going to go ahead and start applying them to this product. Because how we make the signs is going to be a whole other ballgame. You just pick a sign. So now we can just take a piece of wood, paint something on it, and stain it. You can go to any craft shop that. Mm -hmm. Or we can take a sign, stain it, do it in layers, engrave it, and you can backfill it. There's different options. So the filling is something we're going to. I'm going to make sure, no matter how we decide to work on this, which may change along the way, the filling that you learned already, I'm going to make sure that we apply it. So that you can see it applying an actual thing. You can say, all right, well, start out a stack on the wall, now we'll do it. So let's first figure out our plan. Let's first do my juggling act. My hands are not working too good. So. Okay. One. You gotta come up with your idea. We got an idea. We're set to go on that, so that's checked. Two. You gotta figure out materials. My writing on the board is not that great, so do not zoom in on it. All my words. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah, so you see if you got the spell right. I don't trust my spell. As long as I can build it, that's all that matters. Alright, so for materials for the sign, the basic materials we need is the wood. I uh, will work off recycled wood. So this way it's keeping the cost down and it's also making something that would have been in the garbage dump somewhere into something new. So we got the wood. You also need nails, or screws, either way. The longest road. You should see my notes on jobs that work for this. Okay, then, then you gotta stain it and finish it. You gotta figure you're not gonna just say, oh, I want this one stain, I'm gonna want a different color. You gotta leave yourself options. So, stain, and we're going to put times two on that. You're going to have to coat it, because you're going to want the final product to not get 
you know, just grease from cooking in the house and little things like that on it and destroy it, you want it to last. So you got to put a coating on it. There are different kind of coatings when we get up to that. You know, I will discuss different kind of coatings. Uh, there's clear coating, urethane, shellac. I will cover a few at that time and what will be best for the project. You're going to need little things. Now, this is where planning comes in. The little things will kill you. If you plan a project and you don't think of everything, then you can go, you go ahead and start planning your funds for it. This is a small project. It's not a big deal. You have to spend an extra five dollars. When you're doing a big project, that could be an extra five hundred. So you got to plan the little things. So now, how do you hang the sign up? You need the hooks. So that's where the little things come in. This case is just hooks and nails. If I'm doing a big job, screws alone could be $20, $30. You know, and you figure out materials, and if you're on a tight budget on a job, you don't want to take that out of your pocket. If you're doing a project at home, do you want to take that extra $20, $30 out? So if you plan everything ahead, you're going to be good. Can you think of anything I'm missing? Do we want stencil or something like that? Like to write the words on it? Okay, you can do it freehand, you can do it stencil, you can do it printing out, and use carbon to put it on, and then etch it out. So there are different ways you can do that. That was a good question though. There are different ways you can do it. However, each way, you need the carbon paper, or you need the stencils, you need whatever materials you need. So that's additional materials. So I'm just going to put letters. So we got the wood. You also need nails. Wood and screws. Either way. Anything else? Because we definitely got to be missing something. It was too easy to come up with this list. Well, I mean, what are we, what's, what's the wood that we're going to be using for the sign? Like, how, we have to figure out how big the sign needs to be, how heavy it's going to be what type of wood we're using. Exactly, okay. So now, when you're figuring out the wood, you gotta figure how much you need. We're using the recycled, as I said, but if you're going down to buy the material, you gotta figure, if you want your sign to be two feet long, and you want each plank of it to be six inches high, so you need like one by six to make your sign. Okay. Now you gotta figure, out of the eight foot piece, you're going to get four pieces. Is four tiers going to be enough for your sign? That's where part of planning is you've got to figure out what you want your sign to say, how many tiers. So, time is something you've got to factor in. And you've got to figure your time is worth something. So, you want to use your time as efficiently as possible. And efficiently may be taking a two hour project and doing an hour each because of what other things you gotta apply your time to. Or efficiently will be, you can allot that time, let's knock it out. <laughs> it's all for team big. We're not gonna be TV show stars by the time we're done with this. We have some people are faster than others and some people have the time to do it and some people don't. Okay, good question. That's where teamwork comes in. Nobody is faster than anybody on a project. If you turn around and you get this to this point while someone's over here, you take a second, you give them a hand. Everybody can help everybody. Because one of the things that, about learning is helping somebody else. Even if you go faster and you get it right the first time, part of reassuring your thinking and Embedding it into your head is by showing somebody else. And that also helps the other person. You're working outside of your limitations. You gotta plan almost double the time sometimes. Mm -hmm. And you got to, but you can't be afraid. You gotta know how far out of your limitations. Only take it like a step further. Don't take it two or three steps further. Once you graduate that first step, 
then go to the second. Mm -hmm. um, as far as class purposes goes, we're working mostly off of my limitations and what I'm able to safely teach us. Uh, and how I can progress you to cook us. The way you make something from scratch, you first go, well, what the heck do I do? <laughs> and then you start from there. Okay, so that's where we're at. I'm giving you some ideas. You're just gonna come back at me within the next couple of days with your sign, what you want on it, and the roughing. Right now you're at the point where you're at scratch. You scratch your head and say, what do I want on this sign? Scratch your head and say, well, what do I, you know, how much work can I put in this that I can handle, mm -hmm. even with the structure? So you're at the point of at scratch. Mm -hmm. If you feel up to it, like you can take on a challenge, don't be afraid to go ahead and plan ahead with the staining, with the materials on the side, the materials and jump ahead a little bit. It doesn't hurt to go ahead and say, well, I printed out materials. Materials, you gotta think of what type of wood you wanna use. Oh, uh, soft pine is great for hanging. Uh, a nice oak is a lot more expensive, but it's great for finishing. So you think about what type of wood you would like to use. We are gonna work with what I got in stock, but think about what you would like and work materials. And if you go with something like a, a more expensive wood or something, if you feel like jumping ahead to that, explain why you went with this wood as opposed to cheaper. Or if you go to cheaper, why you explain uh, why you went to cheaper as opposed to more expensive. I don't expect you to write this all out. This is something you can give me verbally. Mm -hmm. But just so you got it in your head what the reasoning. So. Okay, we're ready to actually get our hands dirty. Thank you for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned something today. Uh, remember, we will be uploading a new video every other week. Uh, we will be advancing on what we learned today, and we will take on new projects. Once again, thank you for joining us.